Well, hi there. I have two pieces of bad news for you. First, we lost the race to the moon. By we, I mean humans. The first animal to travel to the moon were these. Russian tortoises. Fact. The second bad news is that Russian tortoises don't come from Russia. They come from the Middle East and Central Asia. And if those two pieces of information weren't bad enough, if you walk into a pet store, you're likely to see two similarly sized, similarly colored tortoises for sale. This one, the not Russian, Russian tortoise. And this one, usually the smaller of the two, the sulcata tortoise. I've heard people discuss which of these they would rather have, and usually it comes down to which one they think looks cooler and which one is cheaper. Now I should mention that in a few years, that sulcata, which was cute and little, will look like this. And he still has a lot more growing to do. Sulcatas are the third largest tortoises in the world. And the Russian, which was likely the larger of the two at the pet store, will still be a very reasonably sized little mini tortoise. When it comes to size, Russian tortoises are much more reasonably sized than are their African cousins. That is, except for their giant egos, which were massively inflated when they won the race to the moon. But is the winner of the space race, the not Russian Russian tortoise, a good pet? And is it the best pet turtle for you? Yeah, you heard me right. We have a whole video about it if you have a problem with it. Like this day wasn't bad enough already. But to figure out if the not Russian Russian tortoise is the best pet turtle for you, we need to give it a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the not Russian Russian tortoise a score of five out of five. Handling a turtle simply doesn't get any easier. They aren't wet generally, and that is awesome. They're reluctant to bite, and if you should hold them correctly, they shouldn't scratch you either. People always tell me that my snapping turtle is going to bite off my fingers. Well, the nice thing about turtles is that they can't reach all of the parts of their own bodies. Not Russian Russian tortoises can reach less of their own bodies than snapping turtles by far. Even if you get the angriest, most malicious not Russian Russian tortoise on the planet Earth, it still shouldn't ever bite you. If you're getting bitten by turtles, you're doing it wrong. They also can't drop that cute little tail. Probably the only risk is that the tortoise could be injured if dropped. Fortunately, this tortoise will never be heavy or large enough to be unwieldy. Handling a not Russian Russian tortoise is like handling a firm hamburger that kicks in the air a bit like you might if you suddenly learned how to fly. Honestly, really the only thing to watch out for when it comes to handling a not Russian Russian tortoise is that occasionally they might pee or poop and just uh, try to avoid that. When it comes to care, we give the not Russian Russian tortoise a score of four out of five. The care is not complex for not Russian Russian tortoises. The biggest surprise is just that they need quite a bit of space. They're very much smaller than their cousins, the silicata tortoises, so they don't need as much space, but tortoises are busy little creatures. They also don't understand transparent barriers, so don't use them unless you love the sound bang, bang, bang all day long, as long as your confused little tortoise incessantly attempts to walk through the impenetrable air. Now they can't climb or jump very well, so you can build basically a corral for them out of wood or something like that, You'll only need a top if it's to keep predators away from your tortoise. Outdoors is a great option if it doesn't get too hot or too cold. Indoors, at least part of the year, will probably be necessary for most people, though. Indoors, be sure to provide plenty of basking opportunities with high levels of UVB. And offer them lots of mixed vegetables, mostly leafy greens, but not spinach, kale, or other greens that bind calcium. Be sure to add calcium and vitamins regularly to their food. They also like to dig, especially if outdoors, as this may be their only refuge from heat. Provide for this, give them a place to dig, and also make sure that they can't dig their way out of the enclosure. Make sure that water is always available, but that they can easily get out of the water bowl. They can swim, but they aren't great at it. And they aren't great at climbing either, so drowning is a real concern. They can survive a trip to the moon and back, but they can't spend much time in the water. 
I want to take a moment just to say thank you to our rad fans and stinking rad fans who, unlike the not Russian Russian tortoise, really are rad fans and stinking rad fans for supporting us and helping us to do so many awesome things we never honestly would have dreamed of. Your support means so much to us and I, I'd like to encourage all of you, if if you enjoy this channel and would like to see it continue to grow and, and thrive, to please consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks again. When it comes to hardiness, we give the not Russian Russian tortoise a score of 5 out of 5. If you give them the basic requirements of tortoises, they should do really well. Tortoises are hardy, and these guys should live for many decades. Most of the bigger not Russian Russian tortoises that you see are imports. It is probably best to not support this if at all possible. Get a captive bred baby like this one. Heck, if you want a tiny tortoise, why not get a really tiny tiny tortoise? A really tiny, tiny, not Russian, Russian tortoise. Such a tortoise should realistically live many decades. It will cost a bit more, but it is better for the species, more likely to survive, and still only a few dollars a year if you think about it. When it comes to availability, we give the not Russian, Russian tortoise a score of 4 out of 5. Okay, I'm a little bit conflicted about what to tell you here. If you want an import, they're everywhere. They're in pet stores, expos, and online. Everywhere that sells reptiles, pretty much. If it isn't a tiny, tiny non-Russian Russian tortoise, then it is almost certainly an import non-Russian Russian tortoise. But how long is that sustainable? Captive bred non-Russian Russian tortoises like these are much less common, but they are out there. You'll just need to find a breeder, probably online. But do it! They're healthier, sustainable, and oh so cute. Support these breeders. They're working with these animals purely out of love for the species. It's hard to compete with imports. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the not Russian Russian tortoise a score of 4 out of 5. A captive bred baby like these will cost you maybe 2 or 3 times more than an import, though deals can be found. Even if you end up paying that much though, it isn't crazy expensive for a pet that will live for 40 years or more. The rest really won't be too bad. You're going to need a big wooden box. But this is fairly easy to build even if you're bad at building things. Put in some deep substrate that will hold a burrow, a water bowl that can be escaped, a basking in UVB lights if it's indoors, a food bowl, some small hides, and BAM! You're done! And this is why overall we give the Russian tortoise a score of 4.4 .4 out of 5. I'm gonna be honest, tortoises are cute, especially when they eat, and they're fun, but they're not buckets of fun. And a tiny tortoise is pretty much as fun as a giant tortoise without all of the downsides of owning a self-driving bulldozer that doesn't understand clear barriers. So if you want a tortoise, you probably want a captive bred, not Russian, Russian tortoise. It's basically the Aki of tortoises. And if you don't want a tortoise, Thanks for watching anyway. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, eat my little minions. You are so lucky. Yes, I am. Uh... Did, did you just take a poop? What? Just now? Yes. Yeah, I soaked all of mine before I came to make sure they got it all out of their system. Wow. That's what that noise was. Yeah. All right. That was timely. But to figure out if the not Russian Russian tortoise is the best pet turtle for you, we need to give it a score based on our fave <laughs> fave categories. <laughs> 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 <laughs>